Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to have you here. Happy Pear Fair. Um, super excited to be here today. Um, you guys can introduce yourselves in the comments where you're from. Welcome to Pear Deck 101 with Microsoft EDU and Pear Deck. Super excited to have you here today. Um, and we're going to have a blast over the next 50 minutes. So, um, Welcome and glad to have you. Just a little introduction of myself. You'll notice we're in Microsoft PowerPoint online. And so I'm gonna be running this session from here today. And um, you're gonna learn how to create a Pear Deck in Microsoft. And so uh, in Microsoft PowerPoint online, I'm super excited to have you here. My name is Gina Cooper. I'm actually a regional, pair, uh, regional partnership manager with Pear Deck. Um, I joined them about a year ago. And before that, I was a high school technology coordinator for a large district in Pickerington, Ohio. So hello from Ohio. Um, I was here with a district. And before that, I was actually a consultant for about 40 districts across the Midwest on tech integration, professional development, blended learning. And that was my passion. I've worked with over 80 technology programs. And Pear Deck was the most impressive to me because it was so simple to use. It can be as robust as you need it to be. And the impact on student learning and student engagement is just second to none. So I'm really excited to have you here today and learning how to use Pear Deck in your classrooms, especially in this situation that we are in. I do want to take a quick minute and just tell you thank you. Thank you for everything that you did for your kids this past spring. Thank you for everything you're going to do this year. Just you being here says that you're trying to learn new tools and new ways to engage your students. And we are extremely pleased to be able to help you with that endeavor. So just thank you for all of the effort and all of the things that you've put in. Um, my husband's a high school principal. My children are in kindergarten and going into first grade. And so we've seen this from every angle and I'm just super excited to be able to support you. So with that being said, we're gonna jump right in. Um, today's schedule is we're going to learn how to build a Pear Deck in less than five minutes. I know it's super easy. I'm going to show you how to build a Pear Deck in Microsoft PowerPoint online. You'll explore the student and the teacher views. Um, so you will just be watching today um, because we can't have 8,000 people in a Pear Deck. So you'll be seeing the student and the teacher views today. Um, I'll talk about all of those. If we have some time, we'll dive a little bit into Microsoft Teams um, and we're definitely going to talk about immersive reader and hopefully we'll have a little bit of time at the end for questions and answers. So we're going to get started. The first thing we do is if this is an existing uh, a deck that I've done before, an existing presentation, maybe I've lectured from the front of my classroom, maybe I have um, Maybe I have students coming up to the board to draw on slides and things like that. I can actually turn anything that I have into a Pear Deck lesson. So you can also use our templates. So I'm going to show you how to use our templates and create custom slides. So over here, you can see that I have Pear Deck. Pear Deck is an add-in for Microsoft PowerPoint. So it's just an add-in. You're just going to add it from the add-in store um, and then open it. And it opens right here within this Microsoft environment, which is awesome. And then we have our template library. If you click on the template library, it's going to open our Pear Deck page that has all of our templates from beginning of class, during the class, end of the class. We have specific slides for ELA, math, science, world languages, and all different subject areas, science. Um, and so we also have critical thinking and social emotional uh, learning. I don't have time to take you on a tour of all of the templates available to you, um, but check out the templates page um, and that'll come in your resources. So, But once you click on our template library, it will allow you to open all of them. Now, what I recommend is as a district, you have one person download them into their drive and then just share them out with everybody else, okay? So um, for instance, I've already downloaded our beginning of the, of the class uh, templates. So you can see here that these are all of our templates that were built for the beginning of the class, right? Bell ringers, warm up slides, things like that so that you can really get your students ready for questioning. I love this one. Think of a question your classmates might have. So, but for today's intents and purposes, let's say I wanna add a bell ringer to my existing presentation, okay? So all I'm gonna do is click copy on this slide that I wanna to use today for my presentation. And I'm just gonna come over here and paste it into my presentation. 
All right, I'm gonna give it, give it, give it a second for it to work. And then I just drop it right into my existing presentation. So if this is already a, one that I have, but I wanna ask something to get my students ready, maybe you're doing virtual learning and you need to do some uh, getting to know you questions for your students and you wanna throw in a couple at the beginning of an existing slide, then you can also edit this as if you created it from scratch. So I want to know, what do you wonder about Pear Deck, not just today's topic specifically? If you have your own Bitmoji, do any of you have your own Bitmojis? <laughs> I know the Bitmoji craze is amazing. Um, so if you've created your own Bitmojis and you want to personalize this, you can take this guy out and put your own Bitmoji in. You can take out the cloud. Like I said, it would take me 20 minutes just to figure out how to put the pretty blue background on. Um, and so we've done all of that work for you and you can just simply use our prompts and edit the text as you see fit. So again, those are all the different beginning of of slide of class templates that are available for you. The next set of templates that I want to point out to you specifically are our social emotional learning templates. Guys, we have all been through some kind of trauma over the past few weeks, uh, months. We have been through trauma of being quarantined in our homes and just dealing with everything that the world is going through right now. It's really important that we check in socially and emotionally with our students and make sure that we know how they're doing. Um, this is one of my favorite slides. What's filling your bucket and what's draining it today? This is not a frou-frou slide. Slide. This is a slide that can be incredibly impactful on students' intrinsic thinking and well-being. Some of my teachers would edit this and say, what filled your bucket this weekend and what drained it? And so this way I can actually do the same thing. Remember, we're just going to go over to the slide. We're going to click on copy. We're going to go back to our normal presentation. And I want it to be after this one. So I'm going to paste it in there. And again, I can go in and edit it any time that I want and any way that I want. All right. The next one I want to show you is how to create a custom slide. OK, so this is my favorite way because you already have PowerPoints that are existing. Most of you already have that and you don't have to start from scratch. So let's say that this is a slide that I would put up on my board and have a, one student come up and circle or I have one student come up and demonstrate a math program or I have one student give me feedback. Whatever it is, every student deserves a voice. Maybe it's one that I ask out loud and not all of my kids are going to raise their hands on whether they agree or disagree. Some won't answer at all. Some will be like, yeah, but now I've seen the power of Pear Deck and I want to get feedback from every single student that I have, right? I want to know how every single one of them are doing. And so I want to make this into my own custom slide where I can get that formative assessment from every student. So here are the different options over here. Ready? Check these out. We have open-ended response. Okay, you're going to get to see that live and in real time. We have multiple choice, number slides, which is entering a whole number and it shows up on a scale, website slides, which we'll talk about a little bit later, drawings and draggables. For this particular slide, I think it makes sense to make this a drawing slide. So all I have to do to turn this into a slide where my students can draw and circle whether they agree or disagree, all I have to do is click on draw and boom, did you see that? You didn't even see it. And down here at the bottom, I have this footer that shows this is now a drawing slide. That is literally all I had to do to turn that into an interactive slide. Now, you don't ever want to remove this footer, OK, because <laughs> that's the interactivity. That's what says this is an interactive slide. So you don't want to remove that at all. Um, but that's how you turn anything that you have existing into, into an interactive slide. And we'll get to explore some more types in here in just a little bit. So then when you go to present your lesson, and by the way, this works with Microsoft Teams, you can run the teacher dashboard, which we'll talk about in a little bit, in Teams, which is amazing. Um, and you can put this as an assignment and just put it as a link, and then your students can open it right up. So when you go to put your assignment, you put your directions in, you can even assign a point value for it. And uh, again, if we have some time at the end, I will show you what that looks like. But you literally just put it in as a link, and I'll show you how to get that link. When I go to present from Pear Deck, it's going to give me an option. Do you want to run student-paced activity or instructor-paced activity? We'll talk about this in a little bit too, but you can run a completely asynchronous lesson through Pear Deck, okay? Your students can do it on their own. Or even if you do a live class and you have two or three students that are missing from your class, then you can also... Um, send the live class session, you can then send that to them in a student paced lesson so that they can work through it on their own time. 
For today's intents and purposes, I'm going to start with an instructor-paced activity because I want to lead everyone through as I go through it myself, okay? Again, you're just going to watch today. So I already have a session up and running and ready to go. And so um, this is the teacher screen. So I've already started presenting this, all right? And I want to know, so if I could have my students go ahead and respond, I want to know what you wonder about Paradex. So I've started this instructor pace lesson. My students have joined with a code. So my students, when I click on this, they're they'll see the code there and then they'll be able to go to joinpd.com and enter that code, okay? So like I said, I don't want all of you to do that because if all of you do, uh, we will have some issues, but um, I want you to see how to do that. So the students are gonna go to joinpd.com and enter the code or that you have a link that you can just create a link um, so I will click on that just so you can see the link and I just click on give students a link and then I can paste that into Teams or Google Classroom or whatever it is that you're using Canvas or Schoology. Uh, we integrate with those as well now. So um, again, this is what the student screen looks like. And so the student can answer, I wonder how it can engage my students. Okay, so I, as the student, this is exactly what your student sees. How can it engage my students better? Okay, and this is my teacher screen. And when I show the responses, they are already going to come up and ready, all completely anonymous. I can show them in this list view where they're one at a time. Okay, and I can also show it in grid view where I can see, and you can see this person typing here. I can see their answers coming in live and in real time, literally as they can come in as they are typing. So I can see everything that's coming in. So I share the pair. <laughs> so how can it engage my students better? I wonder what makes Pear Deck work well in a remote learning. So that is the student screen, and that's a great way to get to know your students. Um, and see all of their answers coming in and share them with the whole class. Now, in um, in the classroom, we'll talk about what these what these look like in the classroom versus online. All right. So my next my next question for you as students is how much do you know about Pear Deck? All right. So when I switch slides, it comes up on the projector screen or the classroom view. How much do you know about Pear Deck? And the student screen looks like this, where they can answer it, okay? Maybe I say, I've tried it out, okay? So we've got this multiple choice screen where everybody can answer their own time, okay? And then I can show these responses and I can also see these coming in live and in real time. So you can see I have these lessons coming up. I have two people who know what it is but haven't used it. I've got two people that have tried it out. And then, so I can get a quick poll of my class and see like, what if A is the right answer? Then nobody selected A. And so now I have to go back and reteach. This is that quick formative assessment that shows me that none of my class got this right. And so I've got to go back and reteach this lesson. All right. So um, I want to help with this view. Okay. So this is, this is the classroom view where I can see that, you know, all the different people that have answered, but it's completely anonymous. Nobody can see who got the wrong answers or the right answers, but I can see that uh, Sarah, Nicole and share the pair um, know what it is, but haven't used it. I can see that Alana and Tanya, I hope I said that right. Gina and which is me and Barbara have tried it out. And I can see that Ashley uses it and loves it. I can see that Ashley answered D, but how do I know that? How do I know that? Well, there's three different views of Pear Deck. Okay. And you've seen two of them. So I just want to play pretend and explain this a little bit better though. So the first thing you have is student view, right? This is the student view, and I showed that to you earlier, where the student just has their own screen where they're answering the questions. They see the slide on the left-hand side, your prompt, which is your, your Microsoft PowerPoint slide, okay? And they have the answering on the right, okay? So that's the student view. You've now seen this projector view or classroom view where all of the answers are completely anonymous, but you can still see them coming in live and in real time, okay? So in an online environment, if you are doing this through Zoom or Google Meet and you are doing a live session with your students, then your Zoom or your Google Meet screen where you're sharing your screen becomes your projector view. 
Okay. And then do you see this teacher holding this iPad? If I was physically in the classroom, Pear Deck was designed for in-classroom use, right? We just happen to be awesome for remote learning and a great way to engage your students. But when we go back to class, don't forget, Pear Deck is awesome for that. So we have, the, I, I as the teacher would have an iPad, a cell phone, anything that I could possibly get my hands on to untether me from my computer. And from that iPad or cell phone, you can log into the dashboard. Again, we're not going to get into the semantics of that right now, but this is the screen that you get. So imagine me in the classroom. This is the screen that I get. So I can see all of my different students. Okay. I can see who has answered what by hovering over each piece. Isn't that awesome? So I can see every student and how they answered. All right. I can also scroll down to the bottom and see the two that haven't answered yet. So if I have students who haven't checked in now in an asynchronous lesson, so that's live in the classroom, there's three views of Pear Deck, the teacher dashboard, the projector view, and the student view. When you're doing an asynchronous lesson, you only have two views that you need, right? You have the teacher dashboard where you still will see all of your students' responses coming in live and in real time. And then you have the students where they have their view, where they're answering the questions. But that's all you need in an asynchronous lesson. So you will still have all of this information and control when you do that. Okay, I want to also show you what the teacher dashboard looks like from an open ended responses view. Okay, so again, I can split these out into a list view. All right, and I can see every student's name associated with their response. This is the power of the dashboard, right? Because when I project them, they're anonymous. When I project them, they're anonymous. But on my teacher dashboard, I have five things that you do not have on the projector view screen, right? I have your name, the star, the chat box, the three dots, and this other thing that people forget about is the emoji. When you log into a Pear Deck lesson, it will say, how are you feeling today? All right. And it seems like such a simple question, but it's such an an enormous look into your class and their social emotional status for the day. Like if I walk into my room and 25 out of my 30 students have red and yellow faces, I am not going to be doing a deep dive into a brand new math concept with them, right? I'm going to need to do something to get them ready for learning. Okay. Um, or if I walk into my class and everybody's green and one student has a red face, then I know that I need to check in with that one student and see how they are doing. So it's a really incredible insight into how your students are feeling. It's pear fair. So we're all pretty happy today, most of us. So the other controls are this is like your Pear Deck remote control. Like it is, it is an incredible tool. Let's say I have 30, 40, 50 students in my class. Then I want to star only two or three answers. Um, I'll start this one too. I want to only star two or three answers to show to the class. And then when I show them, those are the only three that show up. Cool. So if I look at this in a grid view, by the way, you can change the views. Okay. And I see everybody answering. Check this out. Those are the only three answers that show up, okay? So then I can clear the stars and it will show everyone. And I get this question a lot, like, okay, what if you have a student who writes something inappropriate on the screen, <laughs> right? Like we all have that student, okay? They've said something inappropriate about a classmate or maybe um, they've drawn a rocket ship on their screen or something on a drawing screen. Well, the nice thing is I don't have to show these responses yet. So the projector or the classroom view is still just the slide, but I am still seeing all of these coming in live and in real time. So what I I can do is let's say that I, I'll, I'll make myself the bad guy. <laughs> it, what if I wrote something inappropriate about a classmate? Now in a classroom environment, I would walk up to that student, tap them on the shoulder and say, Hey, um, Hey, I want you to change your answer. That's not appropriate. You know, whatever that is. Um, but if you're in an online environment and you can't do that in a live situation, you can click on the skinny snowman or the three meatballs or whatever you want to call this. And you just click hide response. And now see, I have my projector screen. Now, when I show the responses, notice that my answer is not the one that comes up first. It's the next one in line because I hid that inappropriate answer. Now, if I get my act together, I can show that response again, and then it'll pop back on the screen uh, once I've decided to do that. So awesome way to be able to connect, have a little bit of control, 
and brand new, just released a couple of months ago, one of our teachers asked they wanted a way to give feedback to students. So I know this is a long time on the dashboard, but it really is the meat and potatoes of what we do. And that that immediate feedback for students. Now you can give individual feedback for students. So if I click on the feedback button, maybe I want to say, um, hey, great job, but check your third step in the equation. Then you will have it. Like, what great feedback is that? Like, you've got a student who's doing a math problem. They're on the right track. Or I love your insight into this. All right. So I notify that student. So I've left feedback. So I get a little gray box to show that they have feedback. And then let me show you what that looks like from the student screen. And on the student screen, I get this little pop-up that says, whoops, see, I had an unread message. And I can go in and look at the feedback from my teacher. And then I can mark that I read it and I can fix my step. So I can exit out of that and I can say, okay, fixed step three. So an amazing, amazing way to pull up that feedback to see what your teacher has said. And so that student is getting that immediate response from the teachers. Um, so awesome, awesome way to do that. So that's the teacher dashboard. That's all of the different functions. You can see every single student and how you have given them their information. So um, great way to connect with them on many, many different levels. So that was a pretty good tour of the teacher dashboard. I'm going to move us on to this next question. And the students get this drawing screen. So you can see my student, I'm on my student screen right now. So dashboard is waiting for responses. My projector just says every student deserves a voice. And I want you to circle agree if you agree or disagree if you disagree with this question. All right. So I agree. Um, so <laughs> agree or disagree. All right. And then I'm going to show you something also that you can do is oh, you see my student screen changed. This is like, I've got the power, right? So I locked the screens. It says your teacher has locked responses for this. So you can no longer draw on this screen. So I will unlock them so you can finish answering the question. Those that are in as my students. Yes, I will lock them, unlock them. Then what I do from my projector screen. So again, it's just this. I haven't shown the responses yet, but I can see them coming in on my dashboard is I'm going to go ahead and lock those screens before I show the responses because I don't want just anybody drawing on the screen the entire time. Right. So I'm going to show responses and then I can show them in an overlay to get everybody's responses just on top of each other. OK, so show the responses. Everybody unanimously agrees that every student does deserve to have a voice, which is amazing. So that was the student drawing tool. Um, you got to see that on that side. But I want to ask another question. So every student, we all agree, every student deserves a voice. But this is my next question. Is every student heard? So again, I changed that from my dashboard. This is my projector screen. Students get a little drawing slide. Do you agree or disagree? Is every student heard? And I'm going to kind of go here. And you can see that students have an eraser. They have a text tool. So you can actually do like fill in the blank and things like that. Um, they have a line tool, a highlighter. So you can even have them highlight text. Um, and so that's a great way to do that as well. I'm going to switch back here and show you the magic button. Um, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to finish your responses here. 30 seconds to finish responses. I know. <laughs> So you now saw this timer pop up, right? So I can lock your screens, unlock your screens, and I can also set a timer. So at the bottom of my screen, you can see where it says it's counting down. This is my lock and unlock button down here at the bottom of my screen. Maybe if it comes back up. I think my screen might be too big. There we go. All right, so this is my lock and unlock button. And if I press and hold that, I can get a 30 second, one minute or three minute timer, okay? So you can lock and unlock the buttons down here at the bottom. You can also show responses. These are all on the, on the projector screen as well as the teacher dashboard, all the controls. Press and unlock 
and lock buttons and you can do on demand or you can set a 30 second, one minute or three minute timer. So now I want to show these responses. Okay. That may not be what I expected as a teacher, right? How many of you have ever gotten responses from your class that you weren't expecting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Um, I've been in class where my students answered something and I'm like, what? Like I wasn't expecting that at all. So check this out. Some of you agreed, some of you disagreed. And then some of you were in the middle. Like I was over here. Somebody agreed with me. Somebody wrote not always. And so here's the problem with this right now. Okay. I'm in the middle of my class. I'm getting ready to go to my next slide. This is my next slide, but I am not ready to go there yet because I want to know why you agreed, why you disagreed, or why were you in the middle? I mean, how many of you have ever been in class where you're like, I wish I could drop in an exit ticket or a temperature check to just see how they're feeling, or I forgot to put in a bell ringer or something like that. Like just comment. Yes. If you agree with that. Okay. Okay. Just comment yes in the chat, okay? We've all been there where we're like, I wish I could put some more information in there for my students. Well, Pear Deck has made that possible. This is adjusting your teaching on the fly, being able to do that for your students, all right? So check this out. If I click on new prompt, see this down here in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen? If I click on new prompt, it's going to pull up a bunch of those Pear Deck templates for me that we talked about earlier. So there's things that are good for the beginning of the class. Maybe in the middle of the class, I want to say, do you feel comfortable sharing your thoughts out loud right now? And that way I can find the couple of students that feel comfortable sharing. All right. There's writing a response, A, B, C, or D. Is this statement true or false? Let's do a temperature check. You can also repeat your exact slide that you created. Remember, I created this slide and I can repeat that in any form that I want. So, but for today's intents and purposes, if I want to know why you agree, why you disagree, or why you were in the middle, I want to throw in this response. Please write a response. Okay. And that's the question I want you to answer. So all I'm going to do is click on that template and boom, right up pops that slide. And now my students can go to their student screens and they can answer why they agree, why they disagree, or why are they in the middle? Okay. So if you're a student, thank you for answering, but you can actually stop typing right now because right now I want you to be watching my screen. Okay. I want to show you something really cool. Okay. Watch my screen right now on the YouTube channel. You're on, on the live broadcast. I want you to see this. So I don't know if any of you have noticed when I went over to the student screen a couple of times, but check this out down in the bottom right hand corner of the student screen. There is this little book with a speaker on it. Okay, there is this little book with a speaker on it. If I click on the book with the speaker on it, this is called immersive reader when it comes up. <laughs> as fast as my internet will carry me, okay? This is immersive reader. Some of you, if you're Microsoft users, you may have heard of it before, but not all of you have. And you will notice that this came up already with my, with my settings on it. So I'm gonna show you some of the different settings, but I want you to know that when a student logs into a Pear Deck, even if they have like math class in the morning, social studies in the afternoon, English in the afternoon, every time they log into a Pear Deck, when they click on the immersive reader, it, it, it will save their settings for them, okay? So down here, I can play this out loud. Now it's gonna play in my headphones, not for you, So, but I heard it in my headphones. So it's gonna play it out loud. You can adjust the voice speed, okay? So you can change it to male, female, adjust the speed of how fast it reads and all of that. Okay. Then on the text preferences, you can actually click here. You can change the size of the text. So if they need it bigger, if you're working with visually impaired learners, um, immersive reader was actually designed for students with dyslexia. So you can change their font to whatever font look, kids loves comic sans. If they need a certain color in the background to be able to see a little bit better or to be able to read or for their eyes to process, that's great too. Okay. And then if you click on the paragraph with, you have your grammar options. So we can do some close reading so I can turn off the syllables, nouns, pronouns, all of that. But I could also turn those on and do some close reading. I can even turn on the labels. So it'll tell me, here's your adjectives. Here's your noun. Okay. So it has all of those different options. And then if you click on reading preferences, guys, this is the big game changer, right? Okay. Reading preferences. I can turn on line focus. So I can turn it on and turn it off. And so I want to read one line at a time. So I would come over here and read up. Guys, I grew up with severe ADHD. 
Okay. My son is struggling with it now. When he gets into reading more, I mean, think of this as more of a paragraph or, you know, a few lines of text. This is a game changer to be able to turn on this line focus. And you can focus on one, three, or five lines at a time. So it's a great way to turn that on, be able to scroll through line by line. We have a picture dictionary and I'll show you what that is here in a second. I'm going to turn the line focus off. So we just have this all at once. And then we can translate into over 80 languages. How many of you have spec ed or EL students? I mean, if you have spec ed or EL students, this is a game changer. A little bit of tutorial on how to use it the first time. But again, once you have their settings and you've shown them how to use it, you have their settings. So again, I had Spanish from Mexico in mind, and some of you might be from there. So welcome if you're there. And this, you can either translate by word or by document. Okay. So if I have it on by word right now, I can say, please, and it will read me the English, the Spanish, and it even has a picture dictionary associated with that word. Okay. If I click on write, it's got English, Spanish, and a picture dictionary. If I click on response, this one might not have a, there's not a picture dictionary for every single word, but English and Spanish. You can also turn it on by document as well. And so it will change the entire document into Spanish where they can click on the word and it will still read it in English for them, or they can change it back to the original and it will still do it by word. So immersive reader is incredible. Then to go back to the presentation, all they do is click the back button and boom, they're right back in their, in their presentation. So then they can go in here. This is an amazing, amazing game changer for spec ed and EL students. So I wanted to make sure that you had a really good handle on how that goes. Okay. So awesome, awesome. So Pear Deck gives every student a voice and every teacher deeper insight into their students learning. You're not getting insight from just the three kids who raise their hand all the time in class, right? You are getting feedback from every single student every single day and getting deeper insight into their learning, which is so incredibly important. So a recap of the student view, teacher view. Okay. Again, if you're doing a live lesson, either online or in class, live lesson online or in class, then you're going to have the students have their own screens. They have their own device. They have the student screen where they're answering the questions. Okay. The teacher's just going to have that magic dashboard, right? I actually like to call this my teacher superpower. So if you want to be cool, you'll call it the teacher superpower like I do. Okay. So the teacher superpower screen is incredibly helpful. And that's that's what you have. And then you just share this projector or this online classroom view, I would call it, where you're sharing your screen with all of the anonymous responses. And that's all you have to worry about. If you're doing an asynchronous lesson or a student paced lesson, then you will see that the students just have the student screen and you just have that teacher dashboard that you can log into any time. So you could assign that assignment on Sunday night and log in Tuesday morning to your dashboard and open it up and you'll be able to see who's answered so far, who hasn't, who's logged in, who hasn't, and check in with those students that you might be missing. So those are the three views of Pear Deck. Um, seriously, if you can get that, you're like, you're like there, you've got it. Okay. So there are, I like to say that there's also three ways to use Pear Deck. Okay. We have instructor paced mode where the instructor is leading through just like I've been doing so far today, instructor paced mode where I'm leading you through every single step. I'm telling you which answers to go with, right? Then we have the student paced mode where you are just having your students go through at their own pace, at their own leisure. Um, maybe you have it due on Friday. You can go in and close that session on Friday. Okay. And my favorite way to use Pear Deck actually is to switch between the two. So I've been in instructor paced mode. So uh, one of my science teachers last year was running live online Zoom sessions with his students. They would log in, they would go to his lesson. He would do new content presented to them via live stream so that they had that content live this past spring. Okay. Then he would turn it into student pace mode with the practice slides under that so that they would be able to go in and do some practice with that. So, um, so this is the way that you do that. So I've been doing instructor pace mode and I'm just going to click on these three dots in the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Three dots in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to turn on student pace mode. Okay. It's going to give me a little warning. It's going to say, look out, you're letting them loose. And I'm going to say, okay, I got it. All right. So now the students are in student pace mode. So I'm going to switch over to my student screen and show you what that looks like. And the students can now scroll through 
and answer these questions on their own in this bottom left-hand corner. Okay. So they can now scroll through and do this at their own pace. So I'm going to ask all of my students that are in my session right now, which there are not a ton of them, but any students that are in my session right now, if you want to go answer a couple of those slides, I'm actually going to stand up just because I need to stretch my legs. All right. And so your students are going through at their own pace. They're answering these questions, which hemisphere is experiencing winter. They can drag their dots. So this is a draggable and the draggable, um, you can put up to five icons on a page. So that is a great way to be able to reach your students is through these draggable um, icons. All right. And so another one is like math. If you have a graph, and by the way, all these that I'm showing you right now are, um, all these that I'm showing you right now are templates in Pear Deck that you can use. So maybe I want to graph this and maybe mine looks like this. <laughs> so maybe I'm that student, right? Um, the next one, where are you from? I am from, these are a little bit big of hearts, but I am from the USA and Ohio. So any of my students who are in the session are welcome to answer that one. And then we have things like this where you can do, so this is an example of a multi-drag. So we can say, where's Australia? Go over here. Where's Africa? I'm hoping I get these right. Where's Asia? <laughs> and where is Europe? So so you can see that the students, this gives you, then when you get these answers, if somebody wants to make sure that they answer that slide 19, that one, that would be great. Um, and an example for ELA too is check this one out. Like if I'm doing, um, you know, I clicked on my dashboard. It's not going to change it because I'm in student pace mode. This is a great example for ELA, like drag the dot over the nouns. Okay. So, or draw a dot on the nouns. So maybe I say water, um, maybe I want to go with my highlighter and you could say, um, the person, place, or thing, right? <laughs> we go to the gym, when we take our water bottles. Okay, so this is an example of how you could have them highlighting text. You could also do this as a, um, you could also do this as a draggable and put five dots on there and have them drag their dots. So the highlighter view is great for highlighting text on this one as well. Now I do wanna show you something on my teacher dashboard. Okay, check this out on my teacher superpower. While my students are working, I can see everything that they're doing live and in real time. Okay. I can see my students. I can see which students are on which slides. So I can see that I have eight students dragging the dot. I have one student who's still on the map and two students who are still on map slide number 18. And if I click on this, I can actually see their names. So I can see, oh, I see Denise Cooper. Hi, Denise. I'm a Cooper too. Um, so I can see which students are on which slides. Now, if I want them to stop ahead of time, if I want them to stop, I could just put a picture of a stop sign in here and say, okay, you can stop after slide 21 or whatever that is. So, and I also have the control, check this out, to stop student paste mode. And when I stop student paste mode, let me go up here. I'm going to get on, I'm going to get on this slide. Okay. I want to be on this slide when I do that. And when I stop student paste mode, they snap right back to me. Did you see that? My student screen snapped right back to me. It snaps to the slide that I want them on. Guys, check this out. In a matter of 30 seconds, I just got a huge view into my students. And I found that 100% of my class understands the items that begin with the letter B. The bat, balloon, bat, and bug. Okay? 100% of my students got this right. I'm going to lock your screen so you can stop uh, drawing. Okay. So I'm locking the screens there, but check this out. A hundred percent of my students got this right. Guys, how long would it take for you to assign this paper? Just think of this as one example of many. Like if you're a social studies teacher, this might be maps. Like there's all kinds of different ways to use this type of slide, not just kindergarten. Although we are great for littles. My son used Pear Deck in kindergarten last year and it was amazing. And so but it would take me forever to get this paper back from all of my individual students, right? Just to see that 100% of them got it right. I don't have to worry about it anymore, okay? Same thing with draggables. Um, I can see that, oh, maybe we have a little bit of reteaching to do on this one. <laughs> this, this one may be not so great. Math, same thing. If all of these lines line up together, we're in pretty good shape. And besides mine, but if I want to see which students answered what, I can always go into the individual view as well. 
All right, let's see where people are from uh, in the world. So we've got literally people learning about Pear Deck from all over the world today, which is amazing. Um, let's see how our geography went. Okay, I can see, guys, again, in 30 seconds, I know where we need to work on. Like some of my students don't know where Africa is, but I can also cover over, just leave those there. I can hover over and see like the two students that I need to pull aside. So thank you for those examples, actually. That's perfect. All right, I can hover over and see see where those students are and who is what. I can also still go into individual stu student view. And again, same thing here. I can get that individual screen or I can get that overlay and just get a quick view that, okay, my students have mastered this. I'm not going to do 10 more slides on this. All right. The last thing that I want to show you right now is the website slide. So it's not going to make a lot of sense from the teacher dashboard. So I'm going to go over to my student screen and hope that it loads quickly for me. All right. This is a Pear Deck website slide. All right. This is a big game changer for a lot of people. And I'll tell you why. So these are all of our different templates that I was telling you about. If you click on the template library from Microsoft PowerPoint. OK, so this is how this works. All right. And this is a fully functional website. So I can click on any of these links and go to the teaching blog, which by the way, if you haven't checked out is amazing. All right. I can go to the blog. I can go anywhere in the site. So if you are sending your students anywhere at all to any website to do research, maybe it's a website with a 360 degree tour on it. Um, of the Roman Empire and you want to talk about the columns and what time period they came from. I mean, think about your art teachers, your PE, your music. Like you don't have any digital formative assessment tools to help you. This is it. It is literally for every grade level, every single subject area. And so you can put any links in here that you want for them to be able to go to a link to a video. Guys, if you do a Screencastify or a Loom or anything like that, they have an embed code. You could do a video of yourself and then embed it into your Pear Deck. So I tell this story all the time, but I'm going to tell it again because I think it's really meaningful. Uh, my son was in kindergarten last year. And um, his teacher, I had to go to like the district website to get the weekly assignments. And I had to click on all the links in there to figure out like what were papers I needed to print off and which were websites that he needed to go to or videos he needed to watch. And then I had to go to uh, another system like Class Dojo to get the read alouds and the assignments and the Google Meet links. And then all of the specials teacher stuff were in Google Classroom. I'm in ed tech. My husband's a high school principal. We know how to do education. And we were overwhelmed with everything that we had to do. I also had to take a picture of all of his papers that he did. Well, in Pear Deck, you could put all of that into one. So she could literally record herself doing the read aloud and put that in the first slide. All right. And then the next slide be a brain pop video. Maybe the next couple slides are those PDF worksheets. So I don't have to print them off as a parent and he can just circle them on his screen and she get the feedback from every single student all at once. All right. And then you could have, are you ready for this? If you use anything like Flipgrid, Edpuzzle, Quizlet, Quizzes, Kahoot, all of those things, you can actually embed those directly into a Pear Deck slide. So it literally could be the hub for all of your remote learning to put everything in one place. And then just put the day that you suggest it to be in the top left-hand corner. If you're high school, this can work for you too. Maybe you have a deck for each week or unit and some of it's instructor paced and then you can flip back and forth between student paced and instructor paced. So it's an incredible tool to be able to use. All right. So um, the last thing I want to do here is give a second for the takeaways. And if you um, are not in as a student right now, which most of you are not, I want you to put your biggest takeaway in the chat right now. OK, I want you to put your biggest takeaway in the chat. Put a comment on there on your biggest takeaway, the most important thing that you've gotten so far from this lesson. And I'm going to ask if I have anybody on the back end staff right now um, listening, if you want to collect a couple of like main themed questions, I should have about five minutes to do a quick Q&A. So if you want to put any of those in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, and we will have about five minutes for Q&A. So right now, go ahead and take one minute. I want you to... Um, put your uh, biggest takeaway in the chat. Um, you're welcome to put it also in, um, I'll show the responses here as well. Oh, if I go to my presentation screen, that'd be helpful. <laughs> if it catches up, there we go. 
All right. And I'm going to, I'll play some jams here while we have about 30 seconds to collect some questions. Turn on some music while we do Q and A. I came to know that we can use Pear Deck even in Microsoft PowerPoint. Yes, PowerPoint and Google. I need to get the add-on for PowerPoint today. Whoop, whoop. Awesome, great for asynchronous. Yes, you are right. All the way that kids can engage. That's what we're all about, right? We have to be able to do that. The ability to respond through Pear Deck, 100% engagement. These are great takeaways, guys. I love the three, like, yeah, awesome. I didn't know about the translator, so that's immersive reader. That is amazing. Um, so I don't know anything about Brightspace, um, no, but we just released our Canvas and Schoology integrations. So if you are a Canvas or a Schoology school, we can actually do that too. So um, I see what additional apps can you use with Pear Deck? Well, anything that's web-based, you could embed in a website slide. So um, I have a couple questions here about Teams. So if I have a couple of minutes, I will, I will do that. So I see somebody asking here for individual feedback. Yeah, on my teacher dashboard where I see all these responses coming in, I can click on the little bubble and then just leave them feedback. I thought this song was appropriate for today. So, and then that will go to the student and the student will get that feedback. So that's how to do that. And then at the end of a lesson, all you have to do is click on end. I'm going to go ahead and pause my music or at least turn it down a little bit. And I'm going to name my session. So this is Pear Fair Fun Day. <laughs> and then I can save and end this session. And it will just take me back into my PowerPoint presentation. So um, I'm going to see if there's any questions. I, I saw a couple questions about Teams. Um, Danielle, is that, a, is that a pretty big question? I think we've got four minutes, I believe. I'm going to take a quick drink here. Collecting comments and... All right, so this is a big question, is Teams, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Let me get rid of that. Sorry, I got my kids up there for a second while I pull up my Teams screen, okay? <laughs> so it seems like a lot of you have this question, so I'm just going to pull this up here. It's very simple, okay? So I've got my different classrooms. So if I go into here, into my different classrooms, um, I've got my Pear Deck demo class in my Teams, right? And so I'm going to pull up my demo class, okay? And then I've already created this assignment. So I'm just going to view it so I can show you what it looks like. So this is the Pear Deck Fun Day assignment that I put on. Okay. So this is the assignment. So I just went to assignments and I created an assignment. Everybody good with that so far? I just created an assignment. Here's all my different students. Okay. I'm going to go to edit so I can show you how I did this. Okay. When you go to create an assignment, you're just going to give it a title. You can add a category if you want to. You're going to go through the instructions, complete this Pear Deck and get ready to engage your students. So this is an assignment I would give to my teachers. Um, and so click here to enter your Pear Deck lesson for today. So all I did was add resources. And then I put that link. Remember the very beginning when I started that lesson? When you go to add resources, all you're going to do is create a link and then paste that link to your specific Pear Deck, okay? Whether you've done that in student paste, in asynchronous, or in... Um, so let me just grab one for you real quick. So remember, I've got the Pear Deck add-in on, maybe. Well, this is going to be difficult for me. Okay, here we go. So when I go to present with Pear Deck, remember I was in my session, I went to present with Pear Deck and then it allows, now my technology is gonna be fun. So when I go to present with Pear Deck, it's gonna give me that student paste or instructor paste option, right? And then I'm just gonna copy the link from where I started that and put it right here in the, in the resources, okay? Then you can add points. If you wanna add points, that's fine. You can, you can do that like completion points or something like that. Um, due date, all of that fun stuff that you do in Teams, and then you and then you put it in, okay? So um, I'm gonna cancel out of this. And then your student view is, that's it. They have the instructions and they click here to enter their Pear Deck lesson for the day. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. It's gonna ask me to sign into my account. Here, I'll show you on the student screen. Okay, I'm gonna click next. 
It's going to sign me into my Microsoft account as a student. Remember, I'm entering as a student. And boom, I am in. And now I am. I'm going to turn my bookmarks off. So, but now I'm in as a student. Okay. I'm going to say, hey, I'm feeling great. Okay. And then how did it go? Because I already ended the lesson. So I actually stopped it. So now it's going to be like, hey, that was the shortest lesson ever because I put that in last night. Okay. And that was from this lesson. So your students literally just click on the link and they will be in and working. So it's pretty slick. Um, and then you have your graded and all of that stuff in there. So um, everything's there and graded. Um and all of that. So that's what you do. And then from Teams, from here, you as the teacher can actually add a lesson and you can just click Pear Deck and it will actually open the teacher dashboard within Teams. Okay. So uh, it's loading up. I'm going to select which file I want to present. So this will allow me to do it this way, I think. Um, so I'm going to select which file. So as the assignment, you're just going to put the link to the assignment that you did. Maybe I should have done this one first. It's going to pull up all of my different stuff that I have that's ready to go. Um, let me just, I'll present the whole remote learning with Pear Deck. Okay. That's what we just did. And I'm going to select that. It's going to load it and I'm going to click save. And then it's actually going to pull it up right within teams on the teacher dashboard. <gasps> the teacher dashboard pulls up right here within Teams. Isn't that cool? So it's going to say, look out, you've got the teacher dashboard. I'm going to close the join code. Okay. And then you can have your students come in and join in. And then you can open the projector view, right? Here's your button right within Teams. You can open the projector view. Okay. And you can pull that up. Your projector view will open in another tab. And now you're all set. You've got your assignment already made. You have your projector view open and ready to go. And you have your uh, teacher dashboard running right within Teams. This is that link I was talking about. So give students a link. So I did that process a little bit backwards, okay? So you're gonna start the lesson in Teams, okay? You're just gonna add the file that you wanna present from. Maybe it's cells unit one or whatever. I'm gonna click open the open the projector view. I'm going to click on give students a link, right? And then I'm going to go to assignments and I'm going to create an assignment with that link in it. So if I go to create an assignment, then this is where I can do Pear Deck Fun Day, instructions, add resources. You're just going to insert a link. I'm going to paste that link. This is already giving them that unique code. All right. And attach. And boom, it's ready. Points, whatever else you want to do there and click assign and it will be there. How cool is that? So that's your team's integration. So um, I also want to say, I saw something pop up, but oh yeah, assignments. Oh, it's telling me I have assignments. <laughs> So awesome. <laughs> All right. I do want to pull this up for you real quick. And I do want to say, please, please, please tweet your favorite thing about today's session. So before we go, that's the last thing that I'm going to ask you to do. Oh, now it comes up for me. Okay. The last thing I'm going to ask you to do is please, please, please tweet your favorite thing about today's session. And here's what I want you to do. Tag at Coop. Tech 05. So follow me on Twitter. I'm always posting new things. I even had a, a teacher create Paradox for the entire Lucy Calkins uh, series of curriculum. And she shared them with me and she shares them with everybody. She's amazing. Um, and so I'm constantly sharing things like that. So follow me on Twitter at CoopTech05, tag at Paradox and hashtag PearFairPD. And I want to see how many tweets we can get about the Microsoft session. We'll see if we can beat the Google session on tweets going out, okay? So that's what we're going to do today. Tweet about PearFair, tag me at CoopTech05, tag at PearDeck, and hashtag PearFairPD. And we will see, tag Microsoft EDU if you want to. That would be great too, at Microsoft EDU. And we'll see if we can beat the uh, Google session on number of tweets going out today. So. 
Um, are there any other questions, Danielle, that are burning that I need to answer? Um, and then I think we'll be about good to go. Okay, I think we're all set. Um, 11.55 on the dot in Eastern time zone. So wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, tweet, tweet, tweet today, CoopTech05, Pear Deck, and hashtag PearFairPD. And enjoy the next two days and all of your sessions uh, that are going to be amazing. I can't wait to tune in as well. All right, thanks, everybody. Have an awesome day and an awesome week. Bye.